Hi there, so I was finally getting around to filming the Class A regulations video when I started talking a bit about different V speeds, different regulation speeds or speeds with names. And I thought there's actually quite a lot of them, so I'm gonna make a separate video on it. So this is what this is. It's just gonna be a little bonus video. Shouldn't be too long, just explaining what all the different V speeds are. Well, not all of them, but some of the most important ones that we see um, in a day-to-day -day sort of operation. <music> Okay, so welcome to this sort of bonus class on some of the V speeds that you see. This isn't an extensive list, but it is some of the ones that you see uh, more often. Um, so yeah, let's just get into it. So the first one we're going to look at is V1, and this is quite a complicated speed, which I will dive into a bit more in the Class A regulations. But basically, it's a commitment or decision speed. So beyond V1 speed, the takeoff should no longer be aborted. This will normally be called by the pilot monitoring or the pilot not flying during the takeoff roll. In my company, and I'm sure many others, the captain will hold or hover over the first officer, um, over the first officer's hands during the takeoff roll, um, ready to reject the takeoff until reaching V1. And at V1, this certain speed will be a point where the uh, captain removes their hands and the first officer also removes their hands so that we are no longer tempted into rejecting the takeoff and we are committing to taking this plane into the air. V2 is what we call a takeoff safety speed. This is a speed at which the aircraft may safely climb with one engine inoperative while still maintaining control over the aircraft and at a sufficient margin above the stall speed. Normally we aim for a slightly higher speed than this for a normal two engine climb, but in an engine failure situation, which we practice a couple of times a year in the simulator, we would target V2 as the initial climbing speed. VA is the design maneuvering speed. This is the speed above which it is unwise to make full application um, control inputs, full application of the control inputs, as it may generate a force greater than the aircraft's structural limitations. VC would be the cruise design speed, which is also known as the optimum cruise speed. It's the most efficient speed in terms of distance, speed and fuel usage, which will be basically the same as the speed for best long range cruise or VLRC. VEF is the speed at which the critical engine is assumed to fail during a takeoff for calculation purposes and for class A regulation purposes. VEF has to be slower than V1, as it is a speed where we have enough time to recognize the engine failure before V1. It's not just any speed that an engine failure occurs at. It's a speed basically just a little bit before V1 that will allow us to recognize and make the decision to either stop or go at V1. VF is the design flap speed. And I debated whether or not to put this one in, as you never normally hear of it as VF, but no, more commonly it was referred to as a flap limiting speed. This is the maximum structural speed a certain flap setting can take. For example, on an A320, the maximum speed for flap two is 200 knots. We can't fly above that speed without potentially damaging the control surface. Normally this is shown on a little placard in the cockpit so you can double check the speeds before selecting the flap. VLE is the maximum speed for the landing gear extended. This is the maximum speed at which a retractable gear aircraft should be flown with the landing gear down and extended. VLO is the maximum landing gear operation speed. This is the maximum speed at which the landing gear on a retractable gear aircraft should be extended or retracted, the actual mechanical process of the, you know, the doors opening and the gear going down or the doors opening and the gear coming back up. Sometimes these speeds can be different for extension and retraction. For example, on the 737-800, to extend we need to be below 270 knots, but to retract it has to be lower than 235 knots meaning that if you accidentally select it down at 270 knots, you'd have to slow down to below 235 knots before selecting the gear back up. 
Again, these kind of speeds would be on a placard next to the flap speeds, just so you can sort of double check these things before changing the configuration of the aircraft. VLOF is the liftoff speed. This is the speed where after rotating the front wheel off the ground, the other wheels come off the ground as well and the aircraft is fully in the air. VMC is the minimum control speed. This is the minimum control speed at which the aircraft is still controllable with the critical engine inoperative and a bank of no more than five degrees. This is sometimes also given a little A after it to designate it that it's the minimum control speed in the air, but they're pretty much interchangeable VMC and VMCA. The reason we sometimes give a VMCA is because we get a VMCG as well, and just to differentiate the two. VMCG standing for the minimum control speed on the ground. This is the minimum speed that the aircraft is still controllable at with the critical engine inoperative while the aircraft is fully on the ground using only the aerodynamic surfaces, meaning no actual steering from the uh, nose wheel steering. VMCL is the minimum control speed in the landing configuration with one engine inoperative. This is the minimum speed that allows directional control in the case of a go around and a rapid application of maximum power on the remaining engine. VMO is the maximum operating limit speed. Exceeding VMO may trigger an overspeed alarm, and quite often this will be a Mach number as well to give MMO. This is also a weird speed because it changes depending on the configuration of the aircraft. VMO might be quoted in the manuals as 250 knots, for example, but we have, if we have the first stage of flaps out, we might have a flap limiting speed of 200 knots. So that would be our new maximum operating speed in this configuration. So in my head, I always add the word clean onto the end of VMO, as it is the maximum speed in the clean configuration. That's not official, but that's just something in my head because I find that the maximum speed, if you've got the flaps out, is your flap limiting speed. But yeah, um, VMO and MMO, maximum operating speeds. VMU is the minimum unstick speed, unsticking from the ground. This is the speed at which the aircraft can safely lift off the ground and fly away. It is slightly different to VLOF, the speed at which the aircraft actually lifts off the ground and starts to fly because VMU is the minimum speed and VLOF is the real speed that this happens on that specific takeoff. So VLOF will always be at or above VMU. VR is our rotation speed. This is the speed at which the pilot begins to apply aft control pressure to cause the aircraft nose to pitch up, after which it will leave the ground. And this will always be at or above V1, because at V1 we commit to the takeoff, and as soon as we start rotating, we're very committed to the takeoff. We can't reject the takeoff anymore. And then slowly after, we pass VMU and VLOF as both of the main wheels come off the ground as well as the nose wheel. VREF is the landing reference speed or the threshold crossing speed. And it's either the higher of VMCL, the minimum control speed in the landing configuration, or 1.3 times VSO, which is the stall speed in the landing configuration. This just provides a sufficient buffer in case of needing to go around um, that we will be able to control the aircraft safely and not stall it, basically. So VS is the stall speed or minimum steady flight speed, which the aircraft is still controllable and it's usually when you're within the clean configuration, so flaps up and the gear up as well. VSO is the stall speed in the landing configuration. That's what we're doing here with the V reference speed. We're creating a sufficient buffer above the stall speed in the landing configuration. VS1 is the stall speed or the minimum steady flight speed where the aircraft is still controllable within a specific configuration. This will be specified in the manuals or wherever the speed is written down and it could be in the takeoff configuration for example or it could be the climbing configuration, it could be whatever configuration they want to use um, but it will specify and VS1 is just um, a reference for that. This could be VS2, VS3, if there's multiple uh, reference speeds that they want you, uh, if there's specific stalling speeds they want you to know. 
The BSR is the reference stall speed. Um, this is basically a stall speed that has been physically tested by the aircraft manufacturers under very specific conditions and weight. It's uh, not really used that often, but you do see it sometimes and quite often other speeds are derived from these reference stall speeds. That would be like the absolute minimum and then the stall speed we use operationally might have a little bit of a buffer or a margin on it uh, to keep us away from the absolute minimum. VSR0 is the reference stalling speed in the landing configuration. Again, the normal uh, landing configuration stall speed will be derived from this reference speed and the same for the VSR1 speed. It's just the specific configuration as a reference and then we derive the one that we're actually going to use from this one. Uh, VSW is where the stall warning will occur, so this might be a few knots above the stalling speed for whichever configuration we're in. Um, VX, you've seen before hopefully, which is the best angle of climb. VX is the best rate of climb. So that's it. I felt it was important to clarify some of these speeds before going further with the Class A regulations, which are coming. I'm literally filming it now and they're going to get uploaded. It took a while, um, but yeah. They're in the works.